Welcome to Gunworks Long Range University. We have the privilege of training hundreds of clients every year, accompanying them both in training and in the field. We have the joy of witnessing triumphs, but we also share in the heartbreak of missed shots. Each miss provides a learning opportunity, and often the simplest mistakes are the ones that hurt the most. So let's look at correcting the top five basic mistakes hunters make under pressure. This brings us to number one. And in my experience, despite the availability of laser rangefinders, incorrect range is still the number one reason that people miss long range shots. All right, let's talk a little bit about how a laser rangefinder works to understand how we can have an error there. A laser rangefinder is really a super accurate timing device that emits a beam of light and then measures the amount of time it takes for that beam of light to get returned. Now we're talking about a beam of light. Don't think of the laser like your laser pointer where it's a pinpoint beam. Think of it more as like a flashlight. And when I admit a flashlight beam down range, that light would get reflected off of different objects and return back to the laser at different times. Now, different types of lasers will have different shaped beams. Some manufacturers use a round beam. Some manufacturers will use like a square or rectangular shaped beam that's orientated horizontally. At Revic in Gunworks, we believe that most things on a horizontal plane are of similar range. So we use a rectangular beam that's orientated horizontally, and we find that this gives us the best results. Now a basic laser rangefinder is gonna emit a burst of light, and then it's gonna give you a range to whichever object reflected back the largest amount of light. Now that object may or may not be your intended target. Now more advanced lasers, such as the Revic line of lasers, will have targeting modes. And what a targeting mode does is it allows us to tell the laser to ignore either the first light that comes back or some of the later returning light that comes back. And we call these near mode or far mode. In near mode, the laser is gonna give a range on the first returned light that's significant enough to trigger the threshold and provide a range. Now near mode works very well for targets that are skylined. For example, if I have a small animal that's skylined or in very flat terrain to where the beam is much larger than the animal once you get out there, so more of the light beam is going past the animal than is actually hitting the animal and getting reflected back. In near mode, the laser will trigger off that first returned light that comes back from the animal, but it'll ignore the overwhelming amount of light that actually went past the animal and got reflected back at a later time. Now this is an example of one of the targets set up at our range, where if you're not in near mode, you will probably not get an accurate range on this target. Now near mode will not work in rain, in fog or haze, or when there's some sort of an intermediate object that light's gonna hit and reflect back before the main beam hits the intended target further downrange. Now with this elk, you'll see that to get an effective range on this elk, you'd have to be very careful to make sure you're not getting a range on the blades of grass, that intermediate ridge line that is between us and the elk. Now for rain, haze, or foggy conditions, I want a laser that has a far mode option because now I'm telling the laser to ignore those early returns that it's gonna get off of raindrops and haze, and it's gonna give me a range on the last return, which is hopefully the intended target. Now, far mode would give me an accurate range on this bear without being distracted by that early returning light from these intermediate tree limbs. So within the Revic line of laser rangefinders, we have our long range modes. The long range modes are intended for those situations where you're trying to get a range and the unit does not display a range. What that means is the laser did not get enough returned light from any one object downrange, and therefore is basically confused and doesn't know what range to give you, so it responds by not giving a range at all. So when we're in long range mode and we hit that button, that laser is going to continuously send out pulses of light for up to five seconds, and it has a memory, and it remembers the pulses before it, and it starts to build a profile, and you're more likely to get more data back, and therefore you're more likely to get enough data to break that threshold where it gives you your range to your intended target. So if you press the button and it does not display a range, putting it in long range mode will help you dig out a range. Now in that long range mode, you have a choice between long range near and long range far. So use that same criteria that we talked about with the near and the far modes to decide which mode is gonna be appropriate for the circumstances. Now let's talk about checking our reticle zero. So when a laser is built at the factory, the diode is mounted in such a way that it 
may or may not be quite perfectly aligned with the reticle in the display. Now, this is not user adjustable, so if it comes out of alignment, this is something that has to be fixed by the factory. So for example, if you look at this graphic of this elk here, you can see that even though the reticle is on the elk, the laser beam is actually offset. Now let's talk about how we can check your laser in the field. First, I wanna find a street sign, like a, a speed limit sign or something like that works very well. And I want that sign to have a backdrop that's a significant distance behind it. So there's a significant difference in the range between the street sign and whatever's behind it. Now I'm gonna set my laser up very stable preferably on a tripod. I'm gonna put it in near mode because I want it to give me the first return it gets back. Now I'm gonna start by lasing off to the right of the sign and I'm gonna slowly work my way towards the sign until the left edge of my reticle is on the right edge of the sign. And I'm gonna note exactly where that reticle is when that unit first gives me a return on the sign. Now I'm gonna go over to the left side of the sign. I'm gonna repeat the same thing. I'm slowly gonna work my way to the right and note where the right edge of the reticle is when I first get a reading on the sign. Now I'll do the same thing from the top. I'll laze over the top of it and I'll slowly work my way down until the bottom of the reticle hits that sign and note where the bottom of that reticle is when I first get a reading on the sign. And now to check the top of the reticle, we're actually gonna flip our unit upside down. And when I flip my unit upside down and come in from the top, I'm actually checking the top of the reticle without getting returns on the signpost. Now, if you find that your beam is significantly displaced from the reticle, that's a warranty issue that should be returned to the factory. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is rough handling can dislodge your beam. So if your laser rangefinder takes a tumble on a hunt, it's a good idea to check it on a tree trunk or something like that to make sure that that zero hasn't been lost. Let's talk about some tips for using a laser rangefinder in the field to ensure you get a good range. Number one, get very stable, okay? You certainly wanna have your elbows braced, and preferably mount your laser range finder on a tripod or something like that. Also ensure that your lower lens is not being blocked because this is where that returned light has to come back to. Another technique I like to call bracketing. And so what I'll do is when I have an animal and I got something behind it and something in front of it is I will purposely laze what's in front of it and know what that range is. And then I will purposely laze what is behind it and know what that range is. And then I will try to laze the animal and ensure that I get a range of somewhere in the middle of those two. And now I'm confident that I'm actually getting a range off that animal. For example, look at this moose. I would laze the tree in front of it. I would laze the trees behind it. And then I would laze the moose and make sure that I got a range that was between the two sets of trees. Now in rolling terrain, I really like to look at the ground that the animal's feet are standing on and range that. And what this does is it prevents me from getting a range from terrain behind the animal. Now, if you look at the picture of this Audad, if I tried to range the animal, it'd be possible to get a range over the top of its back that would probably be 20 or 30 yards wrong. However, if I lays the feet and the ground that the feet are standing on, I'll get a correct range. This wraps up our five part series on the five simple mistakes that cause heartbreaking misses in the field. Thank you for joining us. For more tips or to check out our long range university classes, please go to gunworks.com.